Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on that process and talking about the DNS resolver and how the domain name system, or DNS, the internet's phone book, actually works to find the website you're looking for. It all starts on your computer, or more accurately, with the DNS resolver software running on your computer or provided by your internet service provider. When you type a domain name, your computer hands it off to this resolver. The very first thing the resolver does is check its local memory, its cache. It asks, hey, have I looked up the IP address for this exact website name recently? If it finds the address stored in its cache, fantastic. The process stops there. It's got the IP address, your computer uses it, and you connect super fast. But, what if it's a new website, or the entry isn't in the cache? That's when the resolver initiates what's called a recursive query. It doesn't know the answer itself, so it's going to go on a journey to find it for you. Its first stop? The top of the DNS hierarchy, the root servers. Think of the root servers as the absolute index for the entire internet's domain names. There are only a handful of these root server clusters globally, managed by organizations like ICANN. The resolver sends its query to one of these root servers. The root server doesn't know the exact IP address for, say, bazai.com, but it does know where to find information for all .com addresses. So, the root server says to the resolver, okay, I don't have the address for bazai.com, but I can give you the address of the top-level domain, TLD, server that handles all .com domains. It redirects the resolver to the .com TLD server. The resolver then goes to the .com TLD server. The .com server doesn't have the host's IP, like the web server's IP, but it knows which specific name servers are responsible for the bazai.com domain itself. These name servers are often managed by the domain registrar or the hosting provider. The TLD server tells the resolver, go ask these name servers, they have the details for bazai.com. Finally, the resolver queries the authoritative name servers for bazai.com. These servers hold the actual DNS records for that specific domain. They know the IP address for bazai.com's web server. They give that specific IP address back to the resolver. The resolver now has the IP address. It sends that IP address back to your computer's browser. Your computer now has the numerical address it needs and can finally connect directly to the web server hosting bazai.com. Phew. Now, where do these name servers get this information? It's stored in things called resource records, or RRs. These are the fundamental data entries in DNS servers. There are different types. A records, store the most common type, the IPv4 address, like 54.22.33.44. Quad A records, store the newer IPv6 addresses. MX records, tell email servers where to send email for that domain, the mail server address. Name records, create aliases, pointing one domain name to another domain name, like www.bazai.com pointing to just bazai.com. Reference diagram, broader view. You can see this whole process visualized in the diagram, your client computer, the local DNS server, the resolver, the queries bouncing up the hierarchy, root, TLD, to the authoritative server, and finally getting the IP to connect to the web server. The diagram also shows how services like AWS Route 53 manage these records for both public websites and private resources within your own network. If you found this breakdown useful, please hit the like button, and subscribe for more explanations of how the internet and cloud